for the purpose of this uh, presentation, we want residents to be able to ask questions. Obviously, this is very new. Um, we already piloted an area and I'll go over the previous pilot in a moment, but there are some new additions to this program that wasn't in our first phase one pilot that people need to understand. Um, so I'll just go over what we did in the first pilot uh, and then share the results and then ultimately what led to the where we are today, which is phase two. So we piloted in 2019, um, Mayor Kenny, first of all, uh, in, in the beginning of his administration committed to do a mechanical street sweeping program in residential communities. His goal was to be citywide. Uh, we started in a pilot area in 2019 and we averaged uh, six pilot areas that had a litter rating. How we selected the areas was based on the litter score. We do a litter index that you'll see later on in the presentation, which shows which areas of city need this type of service. And so areas that we identified in the first pilot <clears throat> that are still a part of the second pilot is West Philadelphia, Parkside to Lancaster, Southwest Philadelphia, Woodland to King Sessing from 49th to Cemetery, Kensington from 2nd Street to Aramingo Avenue, from Tioga Street to Lehigh Avenue, Strawberry Mansion from Diamond Street to Lehigh Avenue, from 29th to 33rd Street. In Logan, Godfrey Avenue to Roosevelt Boulevard, from Broad Street to 5th Street, and in South Philadelphia from McKean Street uh, to Oregon Avenue, from 4th Street to 8th Street. So here are, there are some of the results uh, based on surveys and the type of work that was being done from the sweeping program. During the first phase over a six month period, we cleaned 1,189 blocks that we cleaned regularly. That was once a week. There was 149 small streets in those locations being part of the program. Tonnage, we cleaned on nearly a thousand tons of material, almost 2 million pounds of litter and debris off of our streets in those areas. The significance of that amount of tonnage, that's about one third of a trash day in the city of Philadelphia. Just to let you know what the magnitude of how much litter was on our streets in just those small areas. GPS, we cleaned over, in mileage, we cleaned over 13,300 miles of streets, and we collected significant amounts of material and litter and debris from the city's most challenged neighborhoods. Residents in the pilot areas favorably received the program according to a study that was conducted uh, by the, an evaluation conducted by the mayor's policy office. Over 90% of residents said they wanted to see mechanical street cleaning program continue. Even with the mechanical back, even with the backpack blowers that we had, this program will feature similarly different um, items that will include a less use on less usage on backpack blowers and more usage on uh, parking restrictions in certain areas. So we'll go over that today. But overwhelmingly, residents favorably said yes, we want the mechanical street sweeping program. Yes, we be willing to move our cars. While the backpack blowers weren't a bad idea, we certainly want to continue this program uh, throughout. The city. In addition, we saw litter scores drop. We saw litter ratings drop, and we'll, we'll share what litter ratings mean in uh, a little few. But overall, the areas that we cleaned improved, and they stayed clean while we were in that area, significantly clean. A mechanical street cleaning program, phase one of the pilot, Mayor Kinney, uh, phase two is where we're at now. Mayor Kinney a designated $62 million investment over the five years to go to a citywide program. Mechanical cleaning pilot is part of the city's Philadelphia's commitment to reduce trash and litter from our most vulnerable communities. And these areas has also been identified as having additional city services to support cleaning efforts. So here is the highlights of what phase two will look like. It will run August through November, 2021 this year, and then it will stop obviously for winter reasons. Why do we stop in the winter? Um, because of snow and ice, you can't clean on those areas. And in addition, you cannot, um, we have to transition over to um, leaf season and we have to be also prepared to make sure that uh, any event of a snow operation, we can shift gears. That's why it always usually ends in November, just for your, for your knowledge. Uh, we have a total of 14 areas that we identified that includes the four areas that were, or the six areas that were already in the previous pilot and we're adding another eight, eight to 10 areas uh, for the new pilot. Phase two will launch with four areas beginning this Monday, August 9th, and we will expand to the additional 14 areas over the next three to four months. This will be a hybrid program, which means that mechanical sweeping, sidewalk litter, and trash and compactor removal will be a part of that program. 
and we will consider this still a part of the test phase as we make adjustments to uh, changes in routes, uh, making sure people understand fully that they have to move their cars, uh, making sure that uh, we are uh, able to get to the routes and the times that we say according to the signage. So all of those are going to be an adjustment period when we're able to get through. Um, those are most of the highlights of the program. And some streets will even have uh, sidewalk cleaning where we purchase sidewalk cleaners along with the mechanical broom. So we want to make sure that we do a thorough job, not just cleaning curb to curb, but we want all of the area clean when we leave those areas. We'll go to the next slide. So what are the four pilot areas we'll be getting starting August 9th? Well, North Central from Broad to 22nd, from Glenwood to Diamond, Southwest Philadelphia, Woodland Avenue to King Sesson Avenue from 49th to Symmetry, Strawberry Mansion from Diamond Street to Lehigh Avenue from Sledgy Street to 33rd Street, and South Philadelphia from McKean Street to Argon Avenue from 4th to 8th. And those areas are shaded in the areas that you see to my right on the map. Um, and on your screen to your right in the map, you should be able to... Um, address and see the areas that we're actually moving into. So how did we, what other areas are we rolling out to? Uh, additionally, after this week, we'll also be planning to move out into Frankfurt from Bridge Street to Adams Avenue, from Griscom Street to Torresdale Avenue, in Germantown from Berkeley to Shelton Avenue, from Pulaski to Wakefield Street, from in Kensington, second to, Le to Kensington, from Tioga to Lehigh Avenue, in Logan, uh, Broad Street to Clarissa from Huntington Park to Windrum, Pasco from 58th to 70th from Greenway to Dix, uh, Point Breeze, Christian to McKean from Broad to 24th, Port Richmond, Kensington to Aramingo from Tioga to Lehigh, West Fairhill from 5th Street to 13th from Glenwood to Susquehanna, and West Philadelphia from Parkside to Spring Garden from 52nd to 40th. And these, as mentioned earlier, these streets were selected based on what we call a litter index. The litter index is designed to identify areas of the city that have high indices of litter. Uh, one meaning it will be meaning the cleanest, it's on a grid scale. Four meaning it's the most litter challenge and the colors represent uh, the numbers in between. So if you can see the dark green and the green areas, that represents a one that means they're the most cleanest parts of the city. Whereas if you go down to the dark red or hot red areas, that means they're in the most litter challenged areas of the city and all the colors in between give us a gauge of where we need to focus. If you look at the, those, the map that I just showed you in the previous slide, here it is again, there's an overlay that shows you why we selected these areas first. And we plan on expanding and growing out the program from these points uh, throughout the city. Equipment used. Uh, we are, have invested in different types of equipment from the original pilot. What we found in the original pilot that all streets do not uh, allow us to successfully navigate through tiny streets. We had what we call a six to eight foot broom that would go down streets at least eight foot wide. But in the city of Philadelphia, we have some streets that are less than six feet wide. So we had to purchase new equipment. And this is one example of a sweeper. This is actually a four foot wide sweeper that allows us to get to a very narrow street and certain bike lanes throughout the city of Philadelphia. That's what we we'll use them for. Uh, this is in addition to the a number of sweepers that we've already purchased. Uh, we've also mentioned that we're purchasing sidewalk sweepers, which are uh, the ones that you may see downtown that's used by uh, the Center City District. Uh, we're using regular push brooms, trash compactors to get large bulky material that can't be collected by illegally dumped material. Um, and backpack blowers will still be used in certain areas that we don't have access to streets to allow us to do a thorough job in blowing off lots and blowing out sidewalks to allow us to click up and co collect the litter and debris. The biggest change from phase one to phase two is the parking. Some areas will have restricted parking and it will be selected based on the size and density of each block. This program for the entire mechanical sweeping program will last um, from Monday through Thursday and it will be from nine to 3 p.m. Uh, and from the program from Monday through Thursday, there will be designated uh, parking signs each day. No parking signs will be proposed, posted in two hour intervals each day. And we will do each area of those maps in segments. Some areas will be from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Some areas will be from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And the final segment will be from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., depending on which neighbor of the city that you live in. It is important for residents to adhere to the specified no parking signs, 
at all times, post it on the no parking signs. Warnings will be issued and vehicles parked illegally during the early phase of the pilot uh, will receive a warning, but in the future, uh, which is probably at the start of the beginning of next year, people will be receiving fines. And those parking violations will range um, in, in terms of, uh, I guess, between $35 and $50. I have to check how much those parking fines are today for illegally parking on a no parking area. To minimize the inconvenience of during the parking restrictions, we are in the final stages of designing an application where residents can actually see where the brooms are at any given time on in their neighborhood, on their route. And why is this important? Because once we clean an area, it is uh, safe to rebring your car back to that location, even though it may still be in the 9 to 11 or the time frame in which you're told to move your car. Because our, our parking officers, PPA, will be going ahead of the brooms, ticketing cars, while then our sweepers will come through. And after the sweepers come through, the block is completed. So we may complete the block as early as 930, and then you can bring your car back to that location. This is very important for us because we want to make sure that we're not inconveniencing our residents. We understand parking is very tight in the city. In fact, that was one of the considerations to just use backpack blowers in phase one because we said in some areas of the city, it's just too tight for people to move their cars. Um, so we've tried to design the program to make it as less intrusive and not to inconvenience our residents as much as we possibly can. So there's a partnership there's going to be some give and take between residents and our and the department and the city to make this program a success. Uh, what the city will do is we will provide mechanical cleaning. We will mechanically clean the streets weekly. We'll remove litter and debris from some sidewalks and we'll collect illegally dumped material out of the area. Residents in the pilot area are asked to do the following. Follow the posted no parking signs. It's very important. We can't clean around cars and we can't do a thorough job with cars in a way, which is why we're asking you to move your cars. Place trash and recycling out for collections on your designated trash day at an authorized location between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. An authorized location is in front of your home and nowhere else. The most important part of this is that residents are now dumping trash in locations other than in front of their property, causing trash and litter conditions. A lot of this may be due to the delays that we've recently experienced due to the pandemic. We're happy to report that we're close to being back on schedule. So there is absolutely no reason to move your trash to another location of the city when we can collect it right in front of your door. Secondly, we'll make sure that the trash is also placed in the proper receptacles or in a bag that's tightly secured or in proper containers with lids to prevent spillage. This often leads to litter conditions. And what's not on here, and I will take responsibility to ensure that our drivers and our laborers take uh, good care is that when trash is dropped by trashmen, it should be collected and picked up. If you see this happening, please call 311 so we can address the crew appropriately. Sweep sidewalks and gather debris. Please do not sweep debris into the streets as this causes additional stress on our sweepers. We're trying to focus on keeping trash out of the street and not have it just swept in the street to wait for us to collect it on our mechanical sweeping day. So how would a program work? The program will be, each segment is divided up into uh, mechanical sweeping days. Uh, some blocks will be swept on Mondays, some blocks will be on Tuesdays, some Wednesdays, and some Thursdays, and all of them will have a designated time slot from, from the hours. Here's the one with Strawberry Mansion from 9 to 11 a.m., and here's the streets on Monday or now between 9 and 11 a.m. that will be swept. These streets were strategically mapped out to give people space to try to find a parking place while we're sweeping that area. Uh, so we have intentionally spaced out, you'll notice, for example, in the first column on Mondays, you see 25th, 27th, 29th, 31st, and 33rd. What you don't see on here and what you see on Wednesdays is 26th, 28th, 30th, and 32nd. This is done so that cars can move on to adjoining blocks or parallel blocks or blocks that are adjacent to those streets and have room to move their car while we go sweep and then bring it right back. So they don't have to park blocks and blocks and blocks away. And hopefully this won't be an all cure solution, but hopefully they'll be able to find a location to temporarily move their car while their block is being cleaned. Uh, we understand that this, this may not be the case all the times, but again, this is our best effort to, pre to provide as little, um, as, try to incom less inconvenient to as, as, as least as possible. So those are the reasons why it's happening. So here's, here it is on the block. Uh, on a map that each block is located. 
As we mentioned, Mondays are the green areas. Notice that we start on 25th at the very bottom of the screen, but it jumps to 27th, it goes to 29th, it goes to 31st, goes to 33rd. Between 9 and 11, all of those blocks will be done. Obviously, we'll start, there will be a starting point uh, somewhere on this map, whether we're on the 25th Street side or the 33rd Street side. But again, using the app, you will be able to see what blocks were already clean and be able to bring your car back. In addition, if, you if you're if you home that day when we're cleaning the block and you see us go through, then of course it is safe to bring your block back. Then we go to the vertical, uh, we went vertical, now we'll go to horizontal Monday routes or Tuesday routes, you'll see from Lehigh Avenue all the way to Diamond and all the blocks in, in between, you see Cumberland, you see um, it's turned on its side, so it's hard for me to look at, but you see those streets in between, those are every other street. Also, again, for the same purpose of giving people the opportunity to move their car to a designated location that's not being cleaned that day, so they won't get tickets. This is kind of the sequence for all areas. Uh, here is South Philadelphia, which follows the same sequence, nine to 11. Certain streets are already done on Monday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And again, it's strategically spaced out so that cars will be allowed to park. One thing I need to note is that you'll notice that in between the colored streets, the lines that are colored with streets, there are no colors, there's a gray area. That means that there are no parking restrictions for those blacks. Quite simply, as I said earlier, those blocks are too narrow to navigate for them to move. And again, we did not want all of those cars moving in one area at one time because there was absolutely no place to go. So these are the main blocks for us to be able to address and have cars that no posted, but no parking signs posted. This is Woodland uh, to King Sessing in Southwest Philadelphia. Notice there's a different time for this area, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. But again, the segmented blocks are listed. Mondays through Thursdays. What's not listed here is Fridays, and we intentionally did that because if we, for whatever reason, are unable to get to a block on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, say for a holiday or for any other reason, mechanical failure of a broom, we can use that day to try to come back um, and clean those areas. So we wanted to leave Friday as a designated day to do cleanup work that wasn't done the previous three days during that week. These are, this is another picture of King Sessing. And then finally, we move into areas like North Central uh, Philadelphia, which again has a different time change, but the blocks are segmented accordingly and ultimately a spaced out so that people will have areas to try to park their vehicle during the cleaning times. Um, so how are we letting residents know this? We have developed a mechanical street cleaning pilot flyer that has all of the information that I just discussed in that, in that uh, briefly, our sweep officers are now going out door to door, placing these flyers in so people in these areas are very aware um, that it is starting Monday, what they need to do and what's required. We hope that this program will have a tremendous impact and we strongly believe that it will have a tremendous impact on the amount of litter and debris that's strewn our city streets. We certainly are looking forward to working with our community residents and citizens and other groups to try to make Philadelphia a much cleaner, uh, better place to live. Thank you.